Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to get the query parameters from a request performed to an HTTP web server hosted on the SP32. The SP32 will be running the Arduino core and we will use the synchronous HTTP libraries that we have been covering in the previous um, tutorials in order to set up the web server. If you don't know what the query parameters are, um, the easiest way to, to illustrate is when you go to a website, uh, many times the URL at the end has a question mark followed by some uh, key value pairs. Those are the query parameters and they are useful for uh, many stuff. Uh, they are usually uh, passed as additional content um, to perform some queries, uh, which is why they are uh, query parameters. Uh, so they can pass some additional information, for instance, when you are doing a query to a resource on a um, web server, for instance, with some filtering or some additional conditions. So I'm not going to cover in detail all their uses because uh, there's plenty of, uh, of information around the web, but we'll focus on the actual code needed to obtain them in case uh, some client does a request to our server and pass these query parameters. So. Jumping on to the code, the first thing we need to do is including obviously the Wi-Fi.h library so we can connect the SP32 uh, to a Wi-Fi network and the SP async web server libraries um, so we can set up the HTTP web server using a very easy uh, API and we don't need to worry about the lower level details. In this case, note that we could have uh, do this uh, same tutorial instead of connecting to a Wi-Fi network hosted by a router, we could uh, set up uh, the SP32 to work as a soft uh, access point as we have covered in, uh, in another tutorial, which I will leave the link in the description, but um, we'll connect to a Wi-Fi network. So in that case, this should be your home network um, that you usually connect your devices to. Uh, note that in order for this uh, tutorial to work later when we are trying to reach this web server uh, from a computer or you can test with another device that has a web browser, uh, but that device needs to be connected to the same network um, that we are going to connect the SP32 to. So basically you need the credentials of uh, the Wi-Fi network, namely the network name and the password. As we did before, we'll need an object of this class, a sync web server, um, we need an object of this class in order to set up the routes of our server uh, and the corresponding handling functions. So moving on to the setup function, as usual we will initialize a serial connection and then we are going to connect the ASP32 to a Wi-Fi network and this is pretty much what we have been covering in the previous uh, in the previous videos and note that at the end we always print the local IP assigned to the SP32 uh, to the serial port so we can use it um, in the client uh, to reach this server otherwise we wouldn't be able to reach it if we did not know uh, the IP or if we did not have any other mechanism to retrieve it. So from this point onward uh, we do what we did before, we basically will configure a route on this server. In this case it will be the index route, if you put just a slash and uh, no, no name for the endpoint, it's basically the index route, the base route for our server. Of course that we could have used other route here if we wanted, but we will keep things simple. So, we are going to, to only listen to HTTP GET requests, uh, which is why we use this constant. Um, and finally, to this on method that is used to configure the, the, the route, uh, we need to pass the handling function that will be executed whenever a request is made to this uh, route. Basically, as we have also been covering previously, um, the framework will uh, be responsible for passing this pointer to the request object that we can use in our uh, handling function. And as we have been seeing, we use this request object to return a response to the client. But in this case, in order to access the parameters, the query parameters, we will also use this request object. So, the first thing uh, we need to do, and in this simple example, uh, what we are going to do is basically uh, getting the number of parameters that we have received of query parameters and uh, printing their names and values. So this will be just for simplification, but of course we could implement some other more complex logic uh, in this handling function. So keeping in mind that this is our, our goal, something simple, the first thing we need to do is 
figuring out how many parameters, how many query parameters we have received. So it's very easy to do it. We already have a method on this request object, which is called params. Uh, it takes no arguments and it will return the number of parameters um, that were passed uh, in the request. So as we can see, here, we are storing this number in, a, in an integer variable and we are printing it right away. Uh, so when we are testing our code, we can know beforehand how many parameters were passed. Naturally, if we have received uh, some parameter or multiple parameters, uh, we want to iterate over them and check uh, which is uh, the value of uh, those parameters. Note that uh, when setting the request, the client sets both the, the name of the parameter and the value. So the query parameters are basically um, key value pairs. So in this case, I'm assuming that we are not looking for any particular parameter name or parameter value. So we don't know beforehand in this code uh, which will be the names of the parameters. So we'll just iterate uh, each available parameter and print uh, the names of the parameters and their corresponding values, okay? So basically, we'll do this in a loop. Uh, we already know how many parameters we have. So it's a very simple for loop uh, for all the parameters and then in order to, to get uh, the parameters, uh, we can get them one by one by their index in this uh, simpler approach uh, by using this getParameter method that receives an integer uh, value that corresponds to the index of the parameter that we want to get. Since we know the total number of parameters, we simply will get the, the value uh, of the current iteration and get the corresponding parameter. This will return uh, a pointer to an object of class async web parameter, as can be uh, seen here. And it will be uh, uh, through the object of this class that we will be able to obtain both the name and the value of the parameter. So the first thing, as I, I've said, is obtaining the object that represents that parameter of a given, of a given index. And then once we, once we have retrieved this uh, pointer to this object, we can simply get its name by calling the name method. So if we call uh, the name method on our uh, object, we simply receive uh, the, the name of, the, of that query parameter. And in the case of the value, uh, to keep consistent with the naming, the method that we need to use is this method called value. So we just need to call uh, both of these methods on our uh, async web parameter uh, object pointer and we get the corresponding uh, name and uh, value for that parameter. So this is very simple as can be seen. Um, and after that, just to, to not leave the, the client hanging waiting for an answer, we'll just uh, return uh, an HTTP response to that client using the send method of our uh, request object, the one that we started to use originally. And um, once, once we return that, that uh, uh, response, um, we need to specify uh, the, the HTTP code. It will be a 200 success. And we are going to return some plain text with a message indicated that uh, we have received the request and everything uh, went okay. So uh, basically what we need to worry about when testing this code is looking into the serial console and checking if the parameters that we have sent from the client are indeed being printed. So to, to finish the code, as uh, we usually do, we need to call this begin method on our server object. So it starts uh, listening to incoming requests from this point onward. And as usual, we leave the main loop empty because this asynchronous solution um, doesn't need to, to, to pull um, some object in order to, to, to get uh, in order to get uh, um, to, to execute the handling functions. So uh, once you have uh, uploaded this code uh, to your SP32, you should open your Arduino with the serial monitor. So as can be seen here, I've already uploaded uh, the code to my SP32 with the credentials of my Wi-Fi network. And uh, the first thing it will do is printing uh, the IP assigned to the SP32, which we'll need to use to contact it. So uh, this is a local IP address on my home network. Uh, the one assigned to your SP32 on your home network will most likely be different, but you need to copy this one 
so we can reach it from a client. So in order to make a, a, an HTTP GET request uh, to a web server, uh, the easiest way uh, without needing to code uh, anything is by opening uh, some web browser of your choice. I'm going to use Google Chrome and basically accessing our endpoint. So we need to put this HTTPS part. Some browsers do this resolution for us automatically, others don't. So to be safe, we put the HTTP. Then we put uh, the um, IP of our SP32 because uh, that's the only way we have to reach the server. And then, as I've said uh, before, we are uh, working with the index route, so we just put this slash, and we don't need to put any route name because we don't have any uh, name route, just the index one. And uh, we should be able to access uh, our HTTP server. In this case, I'm going to do the request. As you can see here, uh, I received this information indicating that the message was, was processed by the server. And if I go back, uh, to the serial monitor, we can see this zero here, which means that in our handling function, um, we did not receive any parameter, any query parameter, which makes sense because we did not pass any query parameter indeed. So now I'm going to add a query parameter. First, we need to put here the question mark and let me call it param1 equals to, let me put here an 11 for instance, okay? Now I'm going to do the request. Again, the message, uh, the response was uh, was returned back to the client and we are going to get back here. And as you can see now, basically we now have the number one. Why? Because uh, we have received one query parameter. The name of that query parameter was param1 as we, as we have specified and its value was 11. So, so far so good. Uh, obviously that we can have multiple query parameters. They are separated with an ampersand. Uh, now I'm going to use parameter2. Note that I can call these wherever uh, we want. I'm going to use param x for illustration purposes. It, don't need, it doesn't need to be uh, in numerical order or something like that. It can be wherever we want. So I'm using parameter x. And now I'm putting here some, some more content. Now I have two query parameters on this request. I'm going to send the request again. Okay, everything went fine from the client point of view. Now if, I'm go, if I go back to the uh, Arduino uh, IDE serial monitor, we have here uh, the information uh, stating that we have received uh, two query parameters. The first one that we have uh, analyzed before and our param x uh, with its va value ABC like uh, it was expected. So everything is working as expected. Um, this adds some more flexibility to what uh, we can do uh, with the HTTP uh, web server libraries. There's plenty, uh, many other functionalities that I'm going to cover in other tutorials, uh, but I hope you have enjoyed this one. Thank you very much for watching.